I've got, it's not blood, it's beetroot vinegar and the other one, which you can see this little solution in it, that's bleach because I want to use it as a conductor, I want it to be bared so I can grab hold of it. So I've done some research I suppose you could say and this is the potentials of metal in earth so I'm using aluminium and I'm going to be using copper so I'm expecting to get around about a cell of uh, 0.8 volts so here I'm just seeing what the capacity of the uh, cells are as you can see I filled it up with water it's took 300 mils of water if I can get in close enough you'll see the section here where there's a gap in between the just over that so I'm going to say it's 300 mil in there so I'll put it down as 250 mil max when I'm making me uh, compound up me electrolyte. And I've done a template. This this box leaks. Test here with the box with the water in to make sure that one doesn't leak. This box leaks. So I've started with a negative here with the anode. And I've gone all the way down and doing that until we come to the end here. And then I've got two ways of bridging it. I've got a bridge it across here with the blue. And that's just a template basically. So I can just drop one tray inside the other and then drop all the anodes and cathodes in. Alright, so this is a test meter and I've got it set up for diode testing. And if we take the multimeter ends and I hold them together, then next to it I've got this uh, Tetra Pack, which it's called Tetra Pack. So what I've done is I've, um, I've took plastic film off of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, the multimeter across it like that, yeah, and as you can see it's a perfect conductor, take it off and put it back on again. There you go. So here we have the 15 anodes and cathodes all laid out. The only thing I haven't got in there is the uh, positive end cathode, which is just going to be a red piece of wire splayed at the end, of it, basically. So, I've got a successful leak test. Hours and hours and hours, and there's a white piece of cardboard, and there's not one damp on it whatsoever. So that's a successful leak test. It's now ready for construction. So uh, this is the battery constructed without the electrolyte in it. Now all we need to do is put the electrolyte in, and away we go. We'll see what we get out of it. An earth battery or a tea leaf battery. Right, I've got the uh, tea leaf mix in there now, 15 cells already going, and I've got this down at... Uh, and the sport of rugby down. A new title as well for the elite rugby director. Millivolts. Millie known as the professional rugby director. Millivolts. And I've got this uh, bulb in there, which obviously isn't doing right. Hopefully later this afternoon. I was expecting 12 volts. So, so I measured it at milliamps when, you, when you're drawing, and millivolts when you're drawing, but with the voltmeter connected and the amp meter disconnected, the amp meter disconnected. It's it's raising six volts, six point seven, six point seven. I'm expecting to get twelve volts out of it basically. So, so I'll have this rise. I was expecting twelve volts out of it. Zero point eight volts per cell. Right, it's the battery again. What I've done is I've got 7.5 volt. Don't worry about the wires, I've got the wires the wrong way around. But then I've got me oscilloscope running and I've got it down to some bits of shadows in there. That's 20 millisecond divisions. That's 5 millivolt divisions and that's 3.6, 3.2 millivolts at a second. Let's bring the. Uh, by some oh, I've got that up to 10 milliseconds now. That's 5 milliseconds. That's 2 milliseconds. 1 millisecond. 50 nanoseconds. 20 nanoseconds. 10 nanoseconds. 5 nanoseconds. 2 nanoseconds, 1 nanosecond, 
0.5 nanoseconds, 0.2 nanoseconds. That's as far as my it's going to go. Then we'll put it into a uh, auto mode, get it back up there. It's running around about on auto. This is. It's like in the nanoseconds. I'm going to take it out of auto. 10 milliseconds it brings itself out to. 20 milliseconds. 50 milliseconds. 0.1 second. Let me bring this volts down a little bit. You can see the pattern there now. It's a nice pattern it's giving you. You can see it's DZ voltage because it's so, so unbelievably crisp. Although it is alternating current, definitely is alternating. It's such a small alternating current. I can just level that out and get out to a complete crisp current if I want. It's 20 millisecond divisions. It's 10 millivolt divisions. And I'm getting a reading there of 3.5 millivolts. Yeah, take the market by surprise and cause excess volatility in financial markets. And so, maybe out of that. So again, I have to I apologise for my cold. I'm still snivelling a little bit all the way through all that. That's, those recordings have been taken over a couple of days. Now, the reason why I've done this is because some prat got an ice tube tray and did a voltage thing with a couple of coins on YouTube, and he got 12 volts and two amps out of it. So he said. Let's not be stupid about it. I've written down all the bits of Bob. You, I'm getting 7.8 volts from an aluminium copper battery, all right, and I should be getting 15 volts out of that battery. That's it. Now that was after around about 20 minutes. I'm going to go back down. I'll test it again over the next couple of days, and we'll see what we get out of it. But that's just that's just the initial voltage, and the amperage I'm getting out of it. Um, was 0 0.3 milliamps, <laughs> but then we've got to we've got to imagine that I'm using a piece of aluminium, which is that thick, and I'm using copper, which is 15 amp wire, <laughs> just bared and stuck in the mud. So obviously I can increase the amperage and increase the voltage. Um, by better construction and greater densities of metal because we're talking about free electrons here the amount of free electrons that you can move in a certain amount of material and obviously the more copper and the, the, the shape of the construction the temperature and all many things make a difference to how, how your battery is constructed so those people out there that are snapping a couple of coins together with neodymium batteries and when we're talking about snapping conductors together with neodymium batteries then we've got to talk about angle of momentum and all manner of things of accelerating the electrons through the conductors because mag that's what magnets do, they will accelerate the electrons through the conductors as well so angular momentum denotes that he's going to get extra amperage as well this thing that I've made is soldered joints it's like those things you get out of the market and you buy, you put two little probes into a piece of fruit and after the fruit's dead you take it out of the fruit you eat the fruit and you put them into another piece of fruit a bit like that, you know once it's made, it's made. You don't have to worry about clipping things together. You just drop these anode cathode conductors into the eggshell, egg, egg, egg box, stick your um, tea leaves in there with a bit of vinegar, and away you go. But what I'm trying to say is these people on YouTube that are making these things and just bashing them in and stuff like that and not explaining to you exactly what they've done are complete pellets. They really are complete pellets. You can see I've gone through the construction of that and you know, and took the time and took the video and explained it bit by bit and you know it's a little bit disjointed the video, it's a bit crap edited I, I, I admit like yeah but when I read down my settings, my my readings I got I think we'll determine what kind of power and what and how much metal is actually touching the uh, electrolyte so I've got a um, blah 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 if you see what I'm saying I've got 7.48 volts as an average DC this is 7.48 volts DC under load um, and the load was a 3.3 ohm circuit including a bulb 
when I put 3.3 ohms of resistance into that battery, which was producing 7.48 volts, it dropped down to 1.1 millivolt and 0 0.3 milliamp hours. Zap! Now if you use the equation, what are virgins, virgin are rare, and take the first letters of each one of those words that I've just said, and do a little triangle, and put what are virgins, virgins are rare, in two little pyramid triangle kind of things, um, W stands for watts, A stands for amperage, V stands for voltage, and R stands for resistance. So, if you use that little equation what I've just got, give you there, then you'll be able to work out from those three calculations I've just told you, exactly how much metal is contacted, how many electrons are passing through that circuit, at what speed they're passing through, and how much power they're delivering. And then you'll be able to upscale what you've just seen in my video to exactly how many volts you want, how many amps you want. So that's earth batteries. That's how to build an earth battery. They work, we used to use them for telegraph poles, uh, telegraphs. And we used to be able to send messages from India to England using earth batteries. Still use them today. I don't know why we don't use them, but they should be still in use today. That's earth batteries. The Stenge style.